record the meeting. And I would like to welcome everyone to um, the April Marine Ecosystems IARPIC meeting. My name is Andrew. Um, I am a member of the IARPIC Secretariat, and I'm really pleased to present today's um, program. So just a few technical notes before we get started. Um, I'm sure we're all Zoom pros at this point, but just a reminder to please uh, mute your microphone um, during our presentations. Um, we will have time to have discussions and any question and answer sessions after uh, um, our initial presentations. And at that point, you can ask questions. And if you want, you can always enter questions in the um, chat box. And that way we won't forget uh, your, your question when time comes. And the second is that we're going to do a quick roll call. Um, so I will go alphabetically on my list, I guess, down here. And if you could just quickly state your name and your affiliation, um, that would be great. So um, Kathy, would you mind starting off? Yeah, um, good uh, morning from Alaska, everybody. Happy Wednesday. My name is Kathy Kuhn. Um, I work for Bureau of Ocean Energy Management in the Alaska region um, as a, a chief of the Environmental Studies Program. I also sit as a, one of the co-leads for the IR for Marine Ecosystem Collaboration Team, along with Jackie Grebmeyer and Danielle Dixon. And uh, they are uh, uh, not available today, so I'm uh, running the meeting solo with the help of uh, Andrew and uh, Meredith. So uh, thanks for, for joining in. Oh, great, Meredith. Hi, it's Meredith Lavalley. I work with the IRPIC Secretariat and based out of Anchorage, Alaska. Great, Colleen. Hi, everyone. I'm leaving my camera off for now because I'm making myself some lunch, um, but you'll see my face later on in the meeting. So I'm Colleen Strawhacker. I'm a program officer in the Office of Polar Programs at the National Science Foundation, calling in from Lenny Lenny P. Lands in the now what is now known as the Philadelphia region. Thank you, Christine. Hello, this is Christine Mattia. I'm at NASA headquarters, um, or I work at NASA headquarters um, in Virginia, still working from home, and I help coordinate NASA's involvement in IARPIC. Great, thank you. Candace? Hi, my name is Candace Nackman. I'm with the NOAA Fisheries Office of Policy, and I am also a co-lead for the IARPIC Environmental Intelligence Collaboration Team. Thank you, Sean. Hey, I'm Sean Burrell with BOEM, um, fisheries biologist and a member of the IARPIC um, marine ecology. Great. Thank you. Uh, Christina? We have two Christina. Which one? So. <laughs> yeah, Christina G. Oh. Hi, oh. I'm Christina yeah. Gable. I'm a PhD candidate with uh, Jackie Grebmeyer at the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Sciences. Other Christina. Hi, uh, good to see you again, Christina G. <laughs> Um, I'm Christina Bonsell. I'm a marine ecologist with Boehm Alaska Region. Robert? Robert Gerlach? Okay, let's move on. Um, Olivia? Hi, Olivia Lee. I'm with the University of Alaska Fairbanks and a co-lead for the CIS collaboration team. Thank you. Uh, I've got Raymond. Raymond R. Uh, Rick Raymond. Uh, I'm with Balm, uh, wildlife biologist. Thank you. Seth? Good morning. Seth Danielson here. I'm a physical oceanographer at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, calling in from Seward today. Thank you. Karen? Smith. I'm with BOEM in the Anchorage office and I'm an oceanographer. Great. Uh, Kimberly? Hi, I'm Kim Onimus. I am a Canals Marine Policy Fellow and I am also in NSF's Office of Polar Programs. 
thank you. And last, um, Yislav. I'm, I'm sure I mispronounced that. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, you, you said it right. Uh, Vislav Maslowski here, uh, Naval Postgraduate School. I'm a PI on a, a, a large interdisciplinary project called Regional Arctic System Model, which include also some ecosystem modeling. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, and I will pass it off to Kathy, who will be introducing today's topic. Yeah, thanks, everyone. I'm going to turn my video off because of bandwidth and give me be a little bit patient as I queue up the slides. All right, how's that? Can you see them? The slide them? You're good. That looks great. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for everybody for joining in. Um, this is the April Marine Ecosystem Collaboration Team meeting. And our goal uh, for the collaboration team is to support increasing understanding of the structure and function of the Arctic marine ecosystems and their role in climate uh, systems and advancing predictive capabilities. And the purpose of this meeting is to provide an overview of the next draft Arctic research plan um, from 2022 to 2026, and really specifically uh, maybe have some conversations on one of the priority areas on Arctic systems interactions as it applies to the marine and coastal ecosystems. Uh, so I'm about to run through um, about a 15 minute presentation on this draft uh, science plan. Uh, and as a refresher, for those of you who don't know, the IARPRIC is an interagency Arctic Research Policy Committee. Uh, we sit within the U.S. executive branch by bringing together leaders from 16 agencies, departments, and offices across the U.S. federal government, and we enhance research in the Arctic. IARPRIC was created originally under the Arctic Research and Policy Act of 1984, known also by the acronym ARPA. The act called for a comprehensive national policy focused on research needs and objectives in the Arctic. It uh, also established our sibling organization, the Arctic Research uh, uh, Commission, uh, United States ARC. Um, here are the 14 federal agencies that are responsible for the U.S. investment in research in the Arctic. IARPIC includes representatives, representatives also from the White House uh, Office of Science and Technology and the Office of Management and Budget. Every five years, IARPIC creates a new five-year research plan. The plan is created in consultation with the U.S. Arctic Research Commission the governor of the state of Alaska, residents of the Arctic, the private sector, and public interest groups. This graphic here shows the nine research goals that are included, that are included in our current plan, uh, which is uh, between the years 2017 and 2021. The plan identifies critical areas where U.S. Arctic research supports U.S. policy from community to global scales, and looks for areas where federal investment can be enhanced through interagency collaboration. The plan aims to advance knowledge and decision support for the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. It's implemented in part through the IARPIC Collaborations website, and if you haven't spent any time there, I'd really encourage it. It covers a lot of information. The Arctic Research Plan focuses on research that will be enhanced through cooperation between the federal agencies the plans don't attempt to address all the Arctic research, but those that uh, offer uh, collaboration teams. So um, right now you see on the slide, uh, the current policy drivers and the, uh, five, the nine different collaboration teams. The new plan um, looks and feels very different from the current plan. That's because the IARPIC leadership directed us to cut back on the number of goals and develop a plan that was responsive to the needs and agencies of the Arctic as well as residents, and that it would be flexible enough to address emerging issues. We feel strongly that while the plan is very different, 
it can help accomplish these goals. IARPIC collaborations will need to evolve in some of its processes to both support the current collaboration teams and the new priority area collaboration teams. We don't know yet what this might look like and we're listening to concerns and ideas to help us share uh, and shape this transition. And we aim to ensure a robust response to the next Arctic research plan and to assist IARPIC implementing uh, all the activities that fall outside of the Arctic research plan framework and yet require a robust collaborative approach. The current, um, our, the current and future Arctic research plan also incorporates the principles for conducting research in the Arctic. Researchers working in the Arctic have respons a responsibility to respect local and indigenous cultures and knowledge in advanced stewardship of the Arctic environment. The core principles are be accountable, establish effective communication, respect indigenous knowledge and cultures, build and sustain relationships, and pursue responsible environmental stewardship. We are in process of developing this next Arctic research plan and we're currently um, in this public review phase. Uh, this is the second column from the right on the slide. Uh, this phase will last until uh, the public comment period closes on June 11th. A federal steering group organized an initial public scoping comment period that began in April of last year and closed with a community workshop that was held last September of 2020. Starting this last November, federal drafting teams have been working with that information to create the draft plan. And we could not have done it without the input from the Arctic Research, uh, Research Community for, so thank you all for those inputs. Uh, looking ahead after the public comment period closes June 11th, IARPIC will review and consider all the input received and will revise the plan as necessary. And um, we are uh, planning on uh, working on getting that uh, revision um, done uh, early in the summer and out for a public review in December. This illustration uh, throw, shows the three main components uh, within the Arctic research plan, the policy drivers, priority areas and foundational activities. This plan structure and approach is quite different than the previous plans. The priority areas and foundational activities here are highly connected and are uh, formulated by a matrix. The foundational activities um, presented along uh, the bottom uh, relate to support and inform the priority areas. Foundational areas are critical processes in guiding the federal government's approach to Arctic research and improving research and collaboration on the priority areas. These are intended to continue past the five-year timeframe of the individual plans. The priority areas are a cross-cutting focus that were identified as needed additional attention or research through public comment workshops and outreach both the priority areas and the foundational activities will require and benefit from the existing IARPIC teams that are represented by the collaboration logo in the middle of the, the graphic. This plan um, will include the same policy drivers as the current plan. Over the last 50 years, the national interests and objectives in the US Arctic have remained remarkably stable these remain a good foundation grounded in history and applicable to the current national efforts. And these include uh, well-being to enhance the wellness of Arctic residents with an emphasis on themes of cultural vibrancy, economic development, mental health, and physical, physiological health. Stewardship to advance responsible management of the Arctic with an emphasis on globally driven changes. Security to strengthen national and regional safety, as well as risk management and emergency preparedness themes, and Arctic uh, global systems that we'll um, talk a little bit more about. Uh, the uh, priority areas, um, uh, there's four of them, and these include uh, um, 
uh, sorry, I, I lost my point. The uh, plan identifies four priority areas, each of which identifies a broad cross-cutting goal with expresses the intended convergence outcomes that will be realized from the research investment. The first is community resilience and health. The second is Arctic systems interactions. The third is sustainable economies and livelihood. And the fourth is risk management and hazard mitigation. This priority area format is a significant shift from the previous plans. And this plan takes a targeted approach to priority areas that will enable IARPIC to address the most pressing Arctic research needs that require a collaborative approach. Priority areas are designed to respond to research challenges identified by Arctic communities, federal agencies with a presence in Alaska, federal agencies with Arctic investments, the state of Alaska and other non-federal partners. Uh, keep in mind that previous plans like this plan don't cover all the research conducted by agencies, but focus on those areas of priority where interagency collaboration and partnerships will increase the value of the federal research and investment in the Arctic. Uh, just a little bit more detail on each of these priority areas. The goal of priority area one, community resilience and health, is to improve community resilience and well being by strengthening research and tools to help us better understand the social, natural, and built systems in the Arctic. This priority area looks at the interconnected elements of community resilience, including how the scale and pace of climate, environmental, cultural, and socioeconomic change impact both resilience and health and the cumulative effects of different stressors, such as the COVID-19 um, pandemic. This priority area seeks to help us better predict and understand stressors and how these stressors will shift in character and frequency over time from local to global scales. These advances will lead to an improved understanding of the physical and social impacts of stressors and potential community responses. This area will require working closely with indigenous knowledge holders, state, local, and tribal authorities, and other Arctic nations. There's much to be learned um, from the tools developed during this uh, focus area. Uh, the second, uh, Arctic systems interaction. I think that this has the most relevance for our marine ecosystem collaboration team. The goal of priority area two, Arctic systems interaction, is to enhance our ability to observe, understand, and project, and project the Arctic's dynamic interconnected systems and their linkages to the Earth system as a whole. This area strongly builds from the IARPIC work uh, that is already being accomplished. It looks at the interconnected rapid and complex changes occurring across the Arctic and how they influence one another in order to predict future Arctic and global change. We have to understand human systems and natural systems and larger Earth systems. Ultimately, this priority area seeks to advance understanding of the Arctic system and its connection to the Earth system as a whole. And by increasing that understanding, we can better predict changes to the system. And we can also um, support uh, strategies that minimize the negative impacts and take advantage of the opportunities of a changing Arctic. Sustainable economies and livelihoods. This is the goal of priority area three, and that is to monitor, maintain, and proactively adapt the Arctic's social, natural, and built systems to promote, to promote sustainable economies and livelihoods. This priority area looks at how changes are impacting things like built systems, community relocation, natural resource management, food security, shipping routes, and indigenous ways of life. All of these things are critical to the well being and security of the Arctic and its residents and the nation as a whole. Building and maintaining infrastructure is a key element of this priority area. Considering how complex and expensive it is to work in the Arctic environments. So this includes uh, existing public and private uh, regional infrastructure, including roads, airstrips, bridges, harbor, and port facilities. It also includes energy and elect electricity systems, telecommunication systems, housing, education, healthcare. It's, it's very broad. This priority area seeks to facilitate effective ob observations, monitoring, maintenance, and ad adaptation of Arctic ecosystems and infrastructure. 
It'll also help us better collect and catalog data on Arctic infrastructure, which in turn will help identify where there are Arctic infrastructure needs. This priority area supports advancement in things like coastal and offshore geophysical mapping, updated topographic vegetation and hydrographic data sets, evaluation of soil, water, and air quality, contaminants uh, in marine pollution and debris, and populations of key species. It'll also improve natural resource assessments and the evaluations of economic, social, environmental effects of resource extraction and use. It also aims to be responsive to local needs and challenges. So there will be close partnerships with the state of Alaska and tribal organizations. The goal of priority area four is risk management and hazard mitigation is to secure and improve quality of life through an understanding of disaster risk exposure, sensitivity to hazard and adaptive capacity. So there are four priority areas in the plan and these are supported by the foundational activities or processes. Foundational activities are a new component of this Arctic Research Plan framework that broadly describe essential activities that are associated with most of Arctic research projects. This plan identifies five foundational activities. They include co-production of knowledge and indigenous-led research, data management, education, monitoring, observing, modeling and prediction, technology, innovation and application. These five foundational activities are critical to support a robust and impactful federal research program in the Arctic and ensure that research programs are listening and inclusive of other voices, knowledge holders, scholars. Each foundational activity is intended to continue past these five-year plan. The plan also provides some high-level implementation guidance to IARPIC and measures of success by IARPIC, which will hold itself accountable. Uh, this uh, diagram um, describes uh, some of this. The plan will be implemented through uh, biennial implementation plans that will aim to align federal resources and level partnerships with non-federal entities. As with its predecessor, this plan will be implemented by four new priority area collaboration teams that will be open and open to all interested parties. These teams will direct and coordinate activities to reach the plan goals and ensure coordination and collaboration of resources to address pressing needs. Existing collaboration teams, uh, including the MET, will coordinate closely with the priority area teams and will continue to be vital communities of practice. They will continue to contribute to the objectives of the priority area collaboration teams and may pursue interests and issues outside of the plan. Arctic research plans don't cover all the research done by agencies and IARPIC's interests and activities extend uh, beyond simply being implemented by the Arctic research plan. So the uh, collaboration teams um, will be uh, essential in obtaining uh, success in the program. Uh, here is uh, an illustration of how all the federal agencies uh, shown on the left may contribute to each priority area in the center. Uh, I want to highlight for you that on the right are the collaboration teams with anticipated contributions to the priority areas shown by connecting lines. You'll notice that there's a significant contribution from each of the collaborations to each of the priority areas. Uh, we hope that you continue to see and develop connections uh, to these different um, priority, pri uh, priority areas. And for, um, I had mentioned that the priority area two Arctic system interactions uh, dovetails really nicely with some of the um, marine ecosystem collaboration teamwork, as well as the priority area under sustainable economies and livelihoods. So what's next? Uh, now that you heard a little bit of an overview on this is that we are seeking comment, public comment through June 11th on the priority areas and goals uh, and uh, the foundational activities and the implementation metrics for success. There's a couple ways to uh, comment on this. 
Uh, you can submit comments uh, via the Federal Register notice um, on the Federal Register website. You're also able to email comments uh, directly to IARPIC to the uh, email address here, IARPICplan at nsf.gov. Uh, you're also able to leave a five minute voicemail um, message uh, to uh, the phone number is presented here. Uh, one of them is toll free and you could leave multiple messages if you need to go over um, five minutes. And you can also send hard copy comments to Roberto Delgado, Office of Polar Programs at NSF. So how will these comments be used on this draft plan? After the comment period closes, federal agency staff will review and consider the input and revise the plan as necessary by law. The revisions have to be done specifically by federal agency employees. We'll make all the comments submitted through the mechanisms in the federal register and responses publicly available with attribution on the um, IARPIC Collaborations website. The questions and comments made in this meeting won't be part of this public record, uh, but we still encourage a, a meaningful dialogue and only comments, more formal comments submitted through the uh, previous mentioned mechanisms in the Federal Register Notice will be formally included in the public record. So if you have more questions on this, um, there's a couple ways that you can, you know, review this information again um, on the IARPIC website. Uh, there is a plan development page on a tiny URL and you're able to download um, the plan outline if you want to have a little bit more detail um, in a slower pace of a meeting. And you also are able to reach out anytime uh, to Nikush Carlo, the plan development director or the IARPIC secretariat. Um, additionally, um, like this meeting of our uh, Marine Ecosystem Collaboration Team, there's been some information sessions that have been recorded and you can find those on the IARPIC website. These happened um, in March and earlier in April. There will be two more sessions um, on uh, priority area four in May and uh, uh, some questions overall on the implementation um, on June 2nd. So thanks for listening to that. I realize it was a lot of uh, information, um, but uh, I think that it's gonna be uh, a worthwhile uh, endeavor to uh, understand you know, the focus of this next five years across all the federal agencies, and, and we really look forward to some discussion. Great. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I believe we're going to switch over to the next presentation. That's correct. Yeah, I wanted to make sure yes. we had enough time for discussion. But, you know, as I mentioned, um, there is um, can you see the screen still? Yeah. Okay, hold on, Mike, while I transfer. Um, as I mentioned, um, priority area two is um, one uh, that I think reflects uh, most succinctly for some of the work that we've done on the Marine Ecosystem Collaboration Team. And just uh, a quick you know, five minute overview in more detail of that is uh, priority area two, Ar Arctic Systems Interaction. This area strongly builds from the work that IARPIC already does it looks at the interconnected, rapid, and complex changes occurring across the Arctic and how they influence one another. In order to predict the future, Arctic and global change, we have to understand human systems and natural systems and larger Earth systems. Ultimately, Sorry, Kathy, did you mean to switch to a different set of slides? Yeah, yeah are you on them? No. Okay, hold on, thanks. So you don't see why Arctic system interactions? No, we see the last slide from the previous one with the hey, Facebook that's info. That's Candace's voice. Hold on, let me stop share. Sorry, the only reason I knew what slide you were talking to is because I helped put them together. I know, thanks. Let's see. And it, Candace, don't don't leave because I want to get some of your perspective as soon as, as soon as I cover the Arctic systems a little bit in more detail. So let's see if this okay. works. I'm here. Okay, we got that here. Oh, 
how about now? Perfect. Great, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, so, you know, I just mentioned that the, um, the priority area to Arctic systems interaction is, uh, got, uh, is tightly linked um, with the marine ecosystem collaboration team. Um, it goes broader. Um, than just, um, you know, marine and coastal ecosystems. And this priority area seeks to advance understanding of the Arctic system as a whole and its connection to the Earth system as a whole. And by increasing that understanding, we can better predict changes to support the system. And we can also support strategies that minimize the negative impacts and take advantage of the opportunities of a changing Arctic. Work in this area will require enhanced and improved two-way communication, coordination, and collaboration between decision makers at the policy level and uh, scientific practitioners, non-federal researchers, some of our international partners and indigenous communities. It's strongly supported by the existing IARPIC uh, collaboration teams. And why Arctic systems interactions? Um, you know, as I think we're all familiar, the Arctic is the fastest changing region in the Earth. Uh, we know that temperatures have increased uh, more than twice the global average. And these changes are observed in the physical, biological, and socioeconomic systems. And the changes that are occurring in the Arctic aren't uh, confined to the Arctic. It uh, affects us globally, and it's certainly affecting some of the uh, changes we're seeing in the uh, 48, lower 48. Um, it's also a way to um, have some response to warming. Uh, local and direct changes in the natural system affect uh, overall changes in the ecosystems, uh, are impacted by the melt of the Greenland out ice sheet, uh, effects of our Arctic uh, permafrost change, and uh, the um, reduction of the Arctic sea ice. Feedbacks within the natural system um, affect natural and human systems. And uh, we think that this uh, area will help us uh, lead towards some better collaborative science. And some of the examples include changes in clouds affect sea ice, uh, changes in circulation affect mid-latitude weather, permafrost thaw releases carbon into the atmosphere. And feedbacks within the natural system that affect Natural and human systems. Um, this clearly has some crossover with the marine ecosystems, uh, food security, and local uh, infrastructure. And some of the examples are, include sea ice change and thawing, permafrost affecting the coastlines, especially in western and northern Alaska, and sea ice and water temperature change affecting marine ecosystems and shifting species distributions as we've seen with some key species um, in Alaska and the fish stocks and some of the cetaceans. So foundational activities um, will include modeling, observing, and modeling and prediction, also data management, co-production of knowledge, and indigenous-led research, technology, innovation, and applications. And you can see the teams, uh, our collaboration teams are listed uh, to the right on this. Uh, successful results uh, for metrics, uh, having more shared perspectives and questions regarding the Arctic's dynamic interconnected systems with a focus on ways to maximize monitoring, observing analysis and modeling capabilities to inform decision-making. Great, thank you, Kathy. Um, so I think at this point we have around 15 or so minutes for discussion and any questions you might have um, before we have a brief presentation by the Diversity and Inclusion uh, Working Group. So please feel free to either speak up or enter in the chat any questions you might have. Well, short as people think about a question, because I know that, you know, that that's a lot of information to digest, you know, in a short time period, but it really is the framework of how, you know, the federal agencies and all the partners that we want to engage with are going to focus for the next five years. So, Candace, I'm going to ask you, do you have, you know, from your perspective, you know, something that you would want to share in terms of, um, you know, I guess, um, What's the best way for scientists to engage and better understand, you know, the future of this kind of broad 30,000 foot level scale of a program? 
Sure, and my apologies, my lawn guides are here using blowers and trimmers, of course, right as you called on me. But um, so if it gets noisy, I apologize. Yeah, you know, so having this Arctic Systems Interaction Priority Area um, in, in the plan, to some might seem like it's, it's huge and it's too much. And if you were to look at the current plan, it basically takes, I would say, two thirds of the current plan and puts it into a single um, priority area um, for this draft plan that would take effect in January. But, um, but I think one of the positive things about having all of this kind of combined into a single um, priority area is that over the last year or so with implementing the current plan, we've been noticing a lot more kind of cross team collaboration team meetings, a lot more cross pollination, because you really can't look at marine ecosystems in isolation and you really can't look at sea, what's happening to sea ice. In, in isolation. And so by bringing all of these issues together um, into this Arctic Systems Interactions um, priority area, we really are trying to kind of take that more holistic view as to the different changes in those biological, physical, oceanographic, um, human systems. Um, that we have in the in the region. And so I think if, you know, people can kind of approach it from that mindset, I think that would then help us as we move in towards implementation, putting together effective object objectives and goals and, and performance elements to really advance this particular priority area. Thank you. So I can chime in with some thoughts. I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, this particular priority area, given that I am the Arctic System Science Program Officer <laughs> at the National Science Foundation. And I think kind of what I struggle with and what I'm trying to wrap my head around um, in this plan is that this priority area is like the kind of the number one fundamental science um, kind of priority area or focus or foundational activity in the plan right now. And, and we know that that fundamental research is critical to these other priority areas um, that are more kind of decision and policy um, making oriented. Um, and Kathy and Candace, I think you kind of focused on it being really big. Um, <clears throat> and I would suggest it needs to be even bigger. Um, I think, you know, this Arctic systems interaction, I, you know, I think we're still missing out on a lot of the fundamental science that helps us understand um, the kind of changing Arctic and help us to inform how we would approach the other decision, the other um, priority areas. So for example, I think we're missing out on process-based science that aren't addressing aspects of the Arctic system. Um, I know I've pushed for like more social science and things like that. So um, that's that's where I'm kind of struggling with this priority area a little bit. Um, but you know, I, I think this was also, that's kind of just my approach to, to this priority area and thinking about from my perspective as a program officer at NSF. Thanks, Colleen. I was wondering if anybody on the line who, you know, isn't a federal employee um, might have a perspective on, I guess, um, you know, thinking about like this large overarching plan that is also stating the need for improved Indigenous engagement and Indigenous-led research and, um, you know, I guess how, how you see that like applying if you if you happen to be in a community. Hi, Gay, that'd be great. Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Gay Sheffield. I'm with UAF Alaska Sea Grant here in Nome. And I've, I've been to a couple of these meetings. And one thing I was just thinking of is how, how when you're making your plans to answer your, to sort of get at your question you just asked us, how are you, how is the science being sort of integrated with ongoing um, management, resource management, or, or other uh, health issues that are ongoing, that already have regulatory mandatory needs, and some of those aren't even being filled because there's not enough money, but how is the science that's coming out of all of a sudden these sorts of big overviews, how is that 
how are you making sure that you're really getting at what is needed when the, the like the state or other borough uh, issues are, try, are 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 in the forefront? And so you, you're how is that being integrated regionally along the I'm, I'm Barrow, Bering Street centric. So how is that being integrated in a place that's like a coastal region? I mean, is there looking at what is going on in the region and how to maybe enhance that or bring the science better um, and, and sort of meld to give regions that are already struggling maybe a, a, a better shot at what they need to have happened or what they're expecting to have or what other entities are trying to do? That, Gay, is a, a great question and thank you for asking it. And I'm going to uh, weigh in on my impression, and then I'm going to see if, you know, um, Candace or Colleen would as well. Um, you know, I think that the change from the previous plan to this plan is trying to have that more like accountability and delivering of information. And the way the previous plan is, um, you know, there's the nine, there's nine research goals, nine collaboration teams and performance elements. And then there's a the end of the you know five years we report back on did we accomplish those performance elements that's not really an exchange it's you know a little bit of a scientific bureaucratic process but i think in this plan um, by having a, a biennial update it allows for um i think hopefully the intent is to capture like those emerging issues so you know you, if you're in you know living in western alaska and you're noticing you know harmful algal blooms as a as a uh, issue that hopefully um, through conversations um, in the collaboration teams or during um, reflection of the two-year plans that that information can be prioritized and saying, hey, federal agencies, you're, you say you're wanting to make an impact on communities. What have you found about harmful algal blooms? And if you haven't done it, like let's start focusing our energy there. So I guess it's trying to be more, my impression is it's trying to be more adaptive by having like, you know, regular updates, but I don't know if that specifically gets, I, you know. Something. For example, I was thinking you've got well-being, you know, how about running water to all our communities? You know, is that something that the science and then the needs there are, there are tons of studies that have been done. And, and this is not a criticism. This is just sort of my, I'm scratching my head. Um, there's been tons of studies looking at what is needed. The Arctic Research Commission, blah, blah, blah. Um, state, federal, you name it. On land, at sea, um, for people's well-being, for environmental stewardship. And I'm just wondering, this is a great um, effort and about collaboration and at the ecosystem level, and is there a way to understand what are the other entities doing and how maybe the research then can be collaborative to get at the greater good, which is also on your list as well as other people's lists. And that way everybody's kind of can knock things out of the park a little better as a group. Um, just wondering about that, if that's an, if anybody's thinking along those lines. So Kathy, is it okay if I jump in? Please. Yeah, hey Gay, good to see you. Um, yeah, I mean, so I think the shortest answer I can give is yes, that's exactly what we're looking for. So when we were designing the plan this year in this kind of new framework, one of the ideas behind it was to actually be working on collaborations and on issues that are important to decision makers, but also important to the people who live in the Arctic. So the Arctic residents themselves. And so, you know, I think what we're looking for during this public comment period are, you know, for, for folks to let us know with each of the priority areas that we've identified, what are the T, uh, sorry, the key issues that we should be focusing on within those priority areas and, you know, providing us a list, if you already know of certain groups that are working on those issues, how then, you know, could those collaborations and those partnerships emerge? Because within each of the um, priority area chapters, there is a very short piece in there about um, kind of like who we should be partnering with and, and who those collaborations 
um, should occur with. And so getting more information on that during this public comment period will only enhance what we put into those implementation plans as to how we do that collaboration. So does that, does that answer your question? Or kind I... of, it sounds like you're putting it to me from my, and, and forgive me everybody, I'm talking too much, but it sounds like you're putting it on community members when actually there's DEC, uh, ADF and G, NOAA, Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, Arctic Research Commission, NSA, there's a whole parcel of people doing what they have to do and what they've already got, like they've already gone through the process of what is important, you know, clean drinking water, um, um, clean oceans, whatever, whatever it is. And so is, is the collaborative part of this, is it just, are, are you actively seeking, like there are big entities that are, that don't have enough money and, and collaborative is, it's always great when everyone comes together. And I'm just thinking for out here where we have a hard enough time for the entities that are uh, supposed to be providing service or doing research out here. It's tough. It's tough. We're far out here in, in the known Bering Strait region. Is there a way to have killed more birds with one stone? You know, if, if harmful algal blooms is something, well, who else is doing harmful algal blooms right now? That's NSF, that's AOS, whatever. But is it, what about clean drinking water? That's, um, you know, that's Denali Commission or, or Arctic Research Commission, you know, those kind of things. Are those, are, are, is this program actively going to look at sort of divvying up the coast or divvying up the boroughs or regions or how are you looking at the north? Um, or by communities, and, and who who has mandatory regulatory obligations? They have some money trying to get in to do a certain deed that may be really um, could use, you know, um, research that comes from your group, or vice versa. They have, you know, you you'd actually go further um, together. If that makes sense. Thanks. I'll stop. That was worthwhile um, comment. You know, Gaia, it, it does, yeah, it does make sense to think of what are those, um, I guess, key areas uh, to make sure there's uh, less duplication or more knowledge sharing or more collaboration. And, you know, I, I my impression is that IARPIC has gotten a lot of traction to start to fill that role. Um, but, you know, then, you know, it's, it's a matter of the details of how we do it. Um, you know, uh, you know, having an opportunity to meet, you know, monthly on occasion like this is great. You know, we get great input, but, you know, is that enough because it takes people's time and there's a lot of meetings right now. Um, you know, we can say that there's an opportunity with, you know, biennial reporting where we sit down and, you know, flush out some common ideas that need to be solved. And then we see, you know, how do you better share that information? Or if you determine that there's a need, clean water, you know, who, you know, who can help? But I think, you know, we have to like think, I think really strongly on, you know, how do we receive that information from communities and the state you know, in the regulatory agencies of, of you know, what's working and, and what other priority areas are. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a big thing to tackle. And I, I really appreciate that you, you know, offered your perspective of, you know, taking the time to listening to this, you know, the draft plan and then like offering your reflections on it. it just seems like they've done a lot of work too to get at what are the needs of, the, of each region. Yeah. each of these groups that are working on things and 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 well-being stewardship um health um those are those aren't those these aren't new you know so if you could tap into look at what are the other officials or groups or however you want to split it up doing in a region they might be able to say well this is why we're doing this but boy if we all hit this hard we would get at your goals that you just had listed out earlier. Just just thinking about that. So I'm yeah. sorry, everybody. No, it's good. Um, Colleen, were you gonna say something? 
Oh yeah, I was just gonna say that I really appreciated Gay's comments and I think kind of um, what we will see with the next research plan is that if we want to do it successfully, we'll need to expand partnerships quite a bit outside of the kind of typical um, IARPIC, you know, federal agencies that are engaging in it. So Gay, I don't know if you have the time or the energy, but I, I, I would really encourage you to submit a comment to the federal register. Um, and so, you know, the writing team, I know, right? I, I would roll right. my eyes too, <laughs> um, but just, you know, and, and of course I think Kathy Candace and Meredith and, and Drew and I can all, you know, say, report back to IARPIC too, but if you can, I mean, I think that comment is really important and something that IARPIC needs to be con needs to consider. And so with the federal register, at least it's like out there and public and we're forced to respond to it, so. Isn't this being recorded? Can't you transcribe or something and chuck it in there? <laughs> Seriously, uh, isn't this a public meeting type thing? Okay, no? yes, um, it is being recorded and I am typing notes um, that I will put in informal comments, but those, um, so they'll, they'll be there for people to look at, but as far as like um, responding to them uh, officially uh, and, and sharing them publicly, we're only sharing um, and responding to comments that have been submitted through the federal register process. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but um, Gabe, maybe, um, and anybody who's on the line or if anybody's listening happens to listen to this recording afterwards, if, if you want to muse on, you know, what we're hearing as your main topics and reflect on what those are and, um, you know, refresh that, you know, you could leave a five minute phone message or multiple five minute phone messages, but yeah, it does put a little extra onus on you. But, um, I think some of those, the things that you just mentioned, um, on, you know, capturing regional perspective on priority goals and who's doing what work and how's it being conveyed and is there enough? Um, you know, we'd love to maybe reflect back on what we heard and, and see if you would take that extra time to, um, you know, leave a voicemail or a written couple sentences um, so we can make sure that, you know, it, it's your perspectives represented. Is there a link you can put in the chat box for everybody if they want to yeah. comment on a Federal Register thing? Yeah. For this? Yep. So thanks, Gilda. So if, does anybody have any other questions or comments? If, if not, I, I did want to see if, um, so I'll just pause. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to add? Well, I want to say thank you for, for taking the time um, to listen to, to this. Uh, Meredith and I were uh, musing a little bit before the meeting that a lot of times scientific presentations are a little bit more interesting to uh, digest and pique your interest rather than um, you know a framework for a vision for the next five years. But I uh, certainly appreciate your time and attention. But Colleen, um, while you're on the line, would you mind telling us about some uh, upcoming work that you're going to be looking at? Yeah, thanks to Kathy and the Marine Ecosystems team for allowing me to um, present on the IARPIC Diversity and Inclusion Working Group. So I'll actually pop a link to our team in the chat here. Um, so as you can imagine, at the end of last year, um, the team was a bit in limbo given some executive orders coming out from the previous administration. Um, but with the new administration, um, now one of the pillars is about racial equity. Um, diversity and inclusion has been a main push of the new administration. Um, the diversity and working group has, you know, a lot of momentum now to do some really fun things. So we've been brainstorming. First of all, we brought in a bunch of new team leads, um, and you can see all of them um, on the um, the link that I just posted. Olivia is also a, a team lead, and Meredith helps us out quite a bit um, for the lead too. So we're holding a number of different reading groups. Our last one was on um, the topic of allyship. We'll be holding a similar meeting to this one on Monday, um, basically just trying to get diversity and inclusion input on the next Arctic research plan. So if you want to come and provide even more input, please feel free to join us on Monday. Um, and we're just looking for topics or things that we can be of help to the rest of the IARPIC collaboration team. So first of all, please feel free to join us. We're doing, our reading groups have been really fun um, conversations. And you know, if there's a topic of interest that can help the marine ecosystem team, we would love to hear about it and see if we can help. Um, Olivia, do you have anything else to add in your role or Meredith um, in your role as kind of you know IARPIC diversity and inclusion co-leads? 
I think you did a great job covering Colleen. I, I will add that we are expanding our reading group to hopefully include podcasts or other types of media. So again, you know, we're totally open to how this group operates or what people would like to do to engage in discussion. Thanks, Colleen. Meredith, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, thanks, Colleen. I guess I will um, just say that, yes, a lot of the information we shared here today will be shared on Monday's meeting. Uh, but I think looking at the plan through the lens of diversity and inclusion um, will generate some different kind of thoughts about um, what comments uh, could be needed um, for the plan. So thank you, Colleen. Yeah, thanks, Meredith and Olivia. So that was a really quick overview. Um, I wanted to make sure I didn't take too much time away from your discussion about the Arctic Research Plan. So I'll just open it up if there are any questions or immediate ideas on what you think would be kind of fun to hear about or would be interesting for you to, to see in an upcoming meeting. Well, I guess my question to you, Colleen, um, or an idea would be, um, I guess, uh, improved ways to reaching out to more diverse audiences. And uh, just because I was having a conversation about the educational system with my sister, I'm thinking about early career scientists and how to engage, you know, a more broad or diverse audience, you know, as scientists are entering into the system. But like, have you thought of, um, I guess, novel and improved ways to reach out to, you know, what we're calling a more diverse audience? Yeah, that's a, a great point, Kathy, and something that we're, we're working really hard to do. We've, we've partnered, for example, with the early career team to get more of the early career folks involved in IARPIC. And I know what came up a lot in our allyship topic, it seemed like most people were veering on to how do we get to talk to more um, and, and collaborate more with community members um, to the points that Gay was just bringing up about how do we kind of in, enhance that collaboration. So I think that's a really good you know, topic of conversation we can have in the future. So I know I'm sure everyone's fried after an hour of, Zoom, <laughs> but I, I, again, feel free to reach out to me um, or Meredith or Olivia, if you have any questions, feel free to join the team, then you'll get emails on our next events. And we look forward to having you all there at our next meeting. And thanks, Kathy, for allowing me to drop in. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, Andrew, anything um, in particular you want to close with or you'd like to offer perspective on? Hmm. Um, not necessarily um, more than what you've um, elucidated here, um, but I would definitely encourage everyone to check out the draft plan um, in those links in the chat. And um, if you feel so, so bold to um, or a call to, to write um, a comment, please do. Um, this is how we make the draft uh, plan better. And you know that's an important thing to remember, this is the draft. And so we can always take any comments and insights and hopefully make this a better plan for the next four years. But with that, I think people are beginning to drop off to other meetings. So please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have more questions or visit the IARPIC website. Um, and with that, I will end the recording and I hope that you will be able to join us next month. Thanks. Thank you everybody Bye for your later. time. Thank you.